time to implement. Instead of starting from scratch, we will modify bits of our list model to make it a table model. First of all, instead of inheriting from QAbstract list model, we will inherit from QAbstract table model. And also make sure we replace the superclass constructor to table model and rename our palette list model to palette table model. We stored our one dimensional data in a list like this one. It also fits very well with the Qt model view framework using rows to index it. But how should we store the data for a two dimensional data structure? Suppose we have a table of four rows and four columns. We will store the data by using nested lists like so. Here's the main list and here are the children. Indexing this two dimensional list is easy as this, which would correspond to the number 12, because the first one shows on which row the item lies in. That would be third row, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and the second one shows which column, 0, so that's the 0th column, 12. Very easy to understand and fits the cute model view framework flawlessly. Let's remove those now. Only thing we will change in our constructor for now is the colors parameter. Right now it's a single dimensional list. Let's default it to a nested list. That's done by just putting another list inside that list. Ok, table models not only use row count, but they also require the method called column count. But first, let's implement the row count method. First let's make some space here, and then copy the row count method. Ok, we don't need to do anything else, this is our row count. So just like the row count method, we have to implement something called column count. The column count will return the amount of columns in each row, so the table view can display the correct data in a two-dimensional fashion. This is how the function looks like. As you notice, it's the same thing. Column count is implemented by indexing the zeroth element in our colors list and returning its length, which corresponds to our column count. So we return the length of the zeroth element. And the zeroth element is the internal list here. And the length of that corresponds to our column count. Let's make an experiment now for learning purposes. Let's scroll to the bottom and paste this table data, or at least I can paste it, you have to write it and then comment the model and the insert and remove rows lines. Let's create a palette table model now and pass table data 0 to it. Now this should give us a table view which contains 4x4 four four items but because we haven't implemented the data method yet they will all be empty. And yes, we actually get 4x4 four four items. Now if I would hard code 10 to this column count and run this, our table view would contain 10 columns. So now we see the proof that column count controls the amount of columns inside a table view and row count controls the amount of rows. Now you'll see what I meant with fits the cute model view framework flawlessly when I said that we would use nested lists. Let's start with the flags method because of the fact that we don't have to change anything. We want our items to be editable, enabled and selectable. So let's just copy it. 
boom, done. Let's proceed to the data method. If you remember from the list model, all the data method did was get the row, like here, get the row, pass it to the list to retrieve an item to display, and return the hex code of it. Let's copy this. Paste. Let's focus on the display role. Remember from an earlier tutorial that the index parameter, this one, which is a QModel index instance, contained valuable information about where the item is. That's also where we get our row from, just like here. It also has a method called column, which is now available to us since we use a table model. Column equals index column. So all we have to do is get the column, like we do here, and use it together with the row to index our multidimensional or 2D list to get the correct item to display. And this is the way we do that. That's it. That's all we have to change for the display role. Let's quickly fix all the other roles. Edit role. I'm gonna simplify this. So row equals index row, column equals index column, switch this one to that, and then use the column to index the multidimensional list. Let's copy those two over to tooltip roll, and do the same thing there. Instead of indexing with just a row, we use the column as well. And the decoration role. We use the row right now from the old list model. Let's change that to use the column as well. And we're done. That's it. Now let's test this. But before we can test this, we have to supply Q color objects instead of strings inside our table data. We could go in and manually switch this out by doing that, but that would be too slow and take a lot of time. So instead, we're going to use an easier method. What we will do is we'll create two temp variables called row count equals four and column count equals six. For each for each row count, we will return a list. And that list will, for each column count, return a color. Cute GUI, Q color, which will be yellow as default. So for each row we return this list which contains for each column the color yellow. Let's run this and test. As expected we get four rows one two three four and six columns one two three four five six displaying the color yellow on every item. So basically our data method was implemented successfully using the column count as well. Unfortunately our combo box and list view displays only the first row. Or I mean the first column of rows, row items. The table view is a little bit fucked. If you would click expand it would crash the application like so. And that's because the table models can't be used with three views. So let's remove it entirely or let's comment it out. Alright, let's implement the set data method. There's not much left to do. If you remember the set data method received a value from the view after we have edited an item and we use that value to create a color and replace the old color in this row. What we'll do this time is get the column 
from the index class and use that as well together with the row when replacing the old color and we're done this should now allow us to edit items let's close this tree view because we have commented out its set model because they don't work with tables Okay, if I edit an item in this first column it will actually allow the other views to update as well but if I would do that if I would edit on the other columns they're not going to be shown on these because list view and combo box can only show this first column so we have successfully implemented the set data method which allows us to edit an item on arbitrary column and row so basically we're done Actually, wait, we're not done, not yet. We have to implement header data and also support for inserting and removing both from rows and columns. Let's start with he header data. Instead of returning a hard coded value such as the palette text, which you can see here, I'm gonna actually pass a list containing the header items to the model. like you see here. So in the constructor we create a new parameter called headers. Then we pass that to a private list called headers. Now in the header data method instead of returning the palette text we will use the section variable to index our newly created list. So we use our headers list and index it with this section variable. Let's create our headers then. We know that we have six columns so we have to create six headers. Let's call them palette zero colors brushes um, what more oh my god technical artist one two three four five six great let's pass headers to the constructor if we run this now we should get our custom headers visible on the horizontal orientation part with palette zero, colors, brushes, oh my god, technical and artist.